Get unlimited access to all of our CPE courses at www.teachucomp.com forward slash unlimited CPE. In this lesson, we will examine the time test that must be met in order for a taxpayer to consider a move closely related to the start of work. A taxpayer must meet one of two time tests, the time test for employees or the time test for self-employed persons. If the taxpayer is an employee, he or she must work full-time for at least 39 weeks during the first 12 months after he or she arrives in the general area of the new job location. This is known as the 39-week test. For the purposes of the 39-week test, four different rules apply. First, the taxpayer may only count his or her full-time work as an employee in order to meet the test. Any work done as a self-employed person may not be considered. Second, the taxpayer does not have to work for the same employer for all 39 weeks. Third, the taxpayer does not have to work all 39 weeks in a row. Fourth, and finally, the taxpayer must work full-time in the same general commuting area for all 39 weeks. The employee is considered to have worked full-time during any week that he or she is temporarily absent from work because of illness, lockouts, strikes, layoffs, natural disasters, work leave, vacations, or other similar reasons. If the taxpayer is self-employed, he or she must work full-time for at least 39 weeks during the first 12 months and also for a total of at least 78 weeks during the first 24 months after arriving in the general area of the new job location. This is known as the 78-week test. For the purposes of the 78-week test, three rules apply. First, the taxpayer may count any full-time work done either as an employee or as a self-employed person. Second, the taxpayer does not have to work for the same employer or be self-employed in the same trade or business for the 78 weeks. Third, and finally, the self-employed person must work within the same general commuting area for all 78 weeks. A taxpayer is considered self-employed if he or she works as the sole owner of an unincorporated business or as a partner in a partnership carrying on a business. People who are semi-retired, part-time students, and those who work only a few hours each week would not be considered self-employed. In order to meet the 78-week test, the self-employed person must only consider those weeks during which he or she worked full-time as weeks of work. A self-employed person is considered to have worked full-time during any week he or she is temporarily absent from work because of illness, strikes, natural disasters, or similar causes. In a situation where two taxpayers are married, filing jointly, and both work full-time, either spouse can satisfy the time test. However, spouses may not add their full-time work weeks together in order to satisfy the time test. Taxpayers who expect to meet the 78-week test may deduct their moving expenses even if the 78-week test has not been met by the time the tax return is due. If a taxpayer does not deduct moving expenses on a return and then later meets the time test, he or she may file an amended return in order to take the deduction. If a taxpayer deducts moving expenses before meeting the 78-week test and then fails to meet the test, he or she must either report the moving expense deduction as other income for the year in which the test was not met, 
or use Form 1040X to amend the return, figuring the tax without the moving expense deduction. Like what you see? Get unlimited access to all of our CPE courses at www.teachucomp.com forward slash unlimited CPE.